set ourselves a, a dark night scene. Here we go. And blah, 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 blah. Let's cut open a hole. There, we're going to cut open a window. Uh, erp. And just to make things a little easier for myself, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to silhouette an object. Okay. I've got a silhouetted object in here. Very, very dark gray. Oh. There you go. <laughs> got to switch that box every now and then. Uh, okay. So we've got ourselves a white window. We've got ourselves a dark gray object. And now, because everything is black, this entire region here, this is all underexposed. It's crushed to black. This white area here, you know, this is like a white window. It's overexposed. We've got a, a ton of white light streaming in there. Bright light, bright light. This is gremlin killing bright light. And, you know, it's going to strike the sphere. I have to think, what is the fun house reflection going to be? I think that that is going to be the angle, you know, that if we were to cast a ray out and it strikes the sphere, you know, that is where we will see, you know, the window. I think I could even... You know, rectangularize it a bit, duh, and making up new words here. You know, if I, if I, if the window had, you know, window bars on it. Ugh. Okay, so if we had window bars, then the same thing generally would, would occur. You know, you'll have, you know, window reflection like that. So, don't forget, specular reflections, it's, it's just an extension of perspective. Um, you know, anytime you, you have, you know, anything in, in, in the area that is that is a bright light source, you know, if the thing is just even moderately specu specular, you know, you're going to see um, the image reflected on, on that surface. So, when we put it all together, you know, like, if, if you want, you can, in a darkened room, you could just use specular highlights alone to indicate where there are forms. You know, I, I can I can go and I can just use a silhouette, you know, just to make it easier for me to see. And I can say, you know, well, these things are these specular highlights. I guess what would the window look like in there? What's the angle? You know, I can I can just go and I can throw in specular highlights. Um I can Let's blow a hole in here again. And same deal. Let's get ready for our specular highlights. I guess if I wanted to do a person, you know, I could probably just do specular highlights on specific parts of the person's face, keeping in mind that, you know, it is just a funhouse reflection. And I have to figure out what's Where, where will the bridge of his nose, you know, reflect? Um, you know, the tip of his nose over here. Um, underside there. I might see, a, you know, a little bit there. You know, this is just a specular pass. Um, lower lip. really hard doing this without a silhouette uh, at all but you know you get you get the idea that you can use just a little bit of specular lighting uh, to show something off you know I can say uh, if there's a cylinder I can just throw that in there right because only a certain angle is going to show it now if I throw in a silhouetted object like so Okay. Then the same thing applies. I can go and I can say, hey, I've got, you know, silhouette object, silhouette like that. And then this here is going to wind up being dimmer. Yeah. And then I guess since this surface is turning away from us, I have to use, you know, my same dim shadow color. I have to figure out where is the shadow going to start. Where do things start to dim off? Right about here. This is where where the the, sh 
the thing's going to be you know darkest so that transition starts about there maybe the best way to do this is to start with a light stroke and then increase my brush pressure there that's a nice way to to deal with it and you know I can make it even darker because I have to consider how much exposure okay so anyway um wow this has turned out turned out to be a really long session um yeah until next time guys uh stay tuned <laughs>